Ninja Nerds, in this video today, we're going to be talking about primary skin lesions. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then go over and check out ninjanerd.org. That's where we have all of our notes and illustrations for you guys to check out for every lecture that we put up here on YouTube. We really hope it helps you guys out, and we really hope that you guys are enjoying and getting a benefit of learning from them. So as we continue on in our integumentary system, we're going to be talking about primary skin lesions. And I want you guys to recall, when we talk about the skin, the integumentary system, we're talking about the different layers as well, right? So we have our epidermis, which is our outer portion, our dermis, and then our hypodermis. And when we are talking about primary skin lesions, we're talking about these changes within the skin that we can see on the epidermis, but they could go a little deeper into the dermis and some into the subcutaneous. So primary skin lesions are things that we're going to need to know as nurses in order to document or note changes within our patient. And sometimes it can seem really confusing as to what, what should be what name and how am I going to describe this. And I'm hoping that this video clear, clarifies that or clears it up for you guys as best as I can because I think it's a little simpler than how some textbooks put it. So first we're going to talk about right here the first set of the macule and the patch. So when we talk about macula and patch, we are talking about very similar aspects, except there's just a difference in size. So when we're looking at somebody's skin and we see this circumscribed or a very defined kind of round darkening of the skin, it's typically going to be less than one centimeter in size. It's going to be flat, or you can use another word as non-palpable. Whoops, I almost wrote palpable. Non-palpable. Right? So what that means is that if we were going to assess this patient and for whatever reason we wanted to close our eyes and just feel over the top to see if we could feel a bump and, and we didn't, that would be non-palpable, meaning this is nice and flat on the surface of the skin, it's less than one centimeter, and then it's circumscribed. It has a really nice um, formation or clear definition of what the outside of the, the border is. And for that, some examples would be things like freckles or tinea versicolor, where we can see some changes within the skin. And now tinea versicolor, along with a couple other things that could be macules, can also be a combination or have bigger th formations. Those bigger formations are just what we call patches. So patches are very similar to macules, is that they are flat and they are non-palpable as well but they are going to be greater than one centimeter in diameter, meaning they're just gonna be a little bigger. They're gonna have a bigger delineation up on the skin. And that could also be things like tinea capitis, or if we're wanting to look at a combination of both of these, that could be something like vitiligo. Some discolorations in the skin, some smaller uh, macules, and some larger patches throughout the skin. Moving down here, let's talk about the papule and then the plaque. So the papule is the one that is palpable, right? So that means we have a raised palpable, and it's typically less than one centimeter, right? So what that means is we have some type of raised area, still a little discoloration, right? And it's noticeable. And that would be something like a mole, right? I even have a mole right here on my neck that is raised, I can feel it. Um, I know it's there and it's raised because sometimes I catch it with like a nail when I'm itching my neck. And that is how you can tell the difference between what might be a freckle versus what might be a mole is that one's raised and one's not. Going from a papule to a plaque, a plaque is the same thing. It's raised and palpable. Okay, but this is then going to be greater than one centimeter. So something else that could be considered a plaque could be psoriasis. We're looking at somebody who has psoriasis of the skin, right? They have these big raised areas that we can see and feel. Now let's move on and talk about our areas that could be solid and then our areas that could be filled with fluid. All right, now let's talk about some primary lesions that are a little bigger than what we were just talking about. So these are our lesions that may go down a little bit into um, the dermis. Some could even extend down into the subcutaneous. And when we talk about these lesions, they are um, something that when we assess, if you have your light, right, if you're having trouble seeing if it's raised or not, you can also use your, 
your pen light and shine a little light, or if you have your phone light, shine a light over the patient to see if you're getting some type of raised area. If you can't really tell how big it is, how raised it is, you can use that as well. So we're gonna talk about nodule now. And the nodule, what we're looking at here, is typically around one centimeter in diameter and depth. So you're probably thinking, well, how is that different than what we were looking at before when we were talking about our plaque? And when we were talking about this, it's because it's deeper. And the nodule is going to be a little deeper. It's going to extend lower into the skin. So an example of a nodule could be like a wart. If someone has a wart like on the side of their wrist here, uh, it can also be skin colored. It won't necessarily be different colored than the skin. It could be right around the same. <clears throat> That's because it's a little bit under the epidermis. Similar to the nodule, we can move right into tumor. And tumor is just gonna be greater than roughly around two centimeters, it really depends. It's also gonna have a, a wide diameter and depth. It could even go down to the subcutaneous. And that can be something like a lipoma when someone has some type of lipoma underneath the skin. And it's gonna protrude up out. It's gonna be palpable, right? So both of these are gonna be raised, they're gonna be palpable. And they're gonna be something that we could see, the patient's gonna you know, show us or they're gonna feel it and then we're gonna assess and we're gonna palpate and feel, uh, feel as well. Then we can move over to the wheel. The wheel is a little different, uh, okay? Uh, what we're looking at here is we are looking for something that's raised, right? And when we're looking at this raised, we can also see that it's not very uniform, so it's actually have a, it has an irregular shape, meaning that most of the things that we've been looking at have been a little bit on the round side or at least having some type of oval or oblong shape. This is gonna be very irregular. It's also going to be skin colored or it's going to um, not have any redness that we're going to be noting unless it's been irritated as well. But when it's raised in a regular, we're going to see things on the chest, th commonly known as urticaria or hives or an allergic reaction. So you're looking for this little edematous um, type of filling right on the skin, right? And then this is where you would further assess your patient. What else is going on? Are we having issues with itching, things like that? When did you notice this? And then we're gonna go on to our last grouping here, and these are the ones that are the fluid filled. Okay, so these are ones that you may have seen before, and I think these are the easiest ones as well. So right here we have these really, really small fluid filled, right, less than one centimeter. And what we're looking at here is something that is raised or palpable. So I hesitate with the, saying the word palpable because it's not necessarily something you want to be pressing on because you don't want to rupture these vesicles, but they are going to be fluid filled. And that would be something like chicken pox, right? This little kid right here, not happy, got chicken pox all over, got these little vesicles. Similarly before when we talked about our different uh, macule and patch with our vesicle and then our bulla, our bulla is just a bigger fluid filled area, so greater than one centimeter, that's raised, right, and fluid filled. And that would be something like you would see blisters or you'd see Steven Johnson syndrome with all these lesions, these op openings like right, that fluid filled. And then we have our last one, which is I think the easiest of them all, uh, it's a pustule. It's a fluid filled with pus, right, and it could be a vesicle or a bulla, but when it becomes filled with Pus, we now have a pustule. So that perulient filling in there, and that could be something like psoriasis that has become uh, inflamed, filled with perulient, it could be acne, anything like that that would be filled with pus. All right, Ninja Nerds, that is it. So in this video, we covered primary lesions. Make sure you stick around and subscribe so you can check out our next video where we'll talk about secondary lesions. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something from it. As always, until next time.